I've just filled up the car, reset the trip odometer, haven't started because I'm still in the gas station. Got the GPS here. And where we're doing is we're going to get a 1927 Zenith 34A radio. And that's TRF set, and it's something I got off Craigslist. Uh, I've got a box here for when I disassemble everything. I'm going to put the speaker in that box. And I've got my uh, tool bag there, and over here i got a big box to put the chassis in. You can't see it, because um, the way I'm going to have to carry it is it's going to have to go in the back and be what would be upside down so I don't hurt things, and... Uh, the speaker would get ripped from its mounting uh, bouncing around like that and wouldn't be too good on the chassis so I'm just going to take it all out. I got a bag for the screws and uh, well here we go. You know those of us in Northeast Ohio like to say that Ohio is flat and has no contours and such. Well, right now I am on uh, US 30, the Lincoln Highway, and it's doing a pretty good imitation of uh, southwestern Pennsylvania right now. I have been going up and down hills ever since I got on US 30. You know, about halfway through my uh, journey. So, we will continue later. Well, I've got in the radio and now I'm leaving the place. The screws are a bit stubborn. I've got the car in first gear because it's all very steep, very winding, so I'm going to stop recording. I thought you'd just like to know that and see this. <laughs> this is a back road in, in uh, Carrollton, Ohio. be back to 9, Route 9, then 30, then areas that I know. And, I don't know, I thought I saw an at and site up a little bit, so I might check that out too. Alright, I'm back on US 30, and I think you'll be able to see that coming up. Yeah. US 30. Lincoln Highway. I just saw an interesting sign for a local business. Doc Brown's lightning rods. Oh, love the Back to the Future reference. And as you see, there's lots of trucks on here, including this one that's in front of me, which is hauling a digger for, you know, drilling and shale work, which is common in this area, which, um, you know, in the hilly area, back in Carrollton, he wasn't doing too well up the hills, and I had this guy in a Cadillac behind me, riding my bumper, so I'm supposed to be riding this guy, I don't think so. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is uh, on the way home. Just went through Hanoverton, on the way to Lisbon, which is then where I go back to Columbiana, and then back home to New Middletown. Welcome to a first look at my newest acquisition, which is the Zenith 34E radio. Yeah, I just, it's been in here since yesterday. This is my garage, and I'm getting ready to start disassembling parts of it so I can take it into the house because it's awkward to begin with because it's a big radio and it's rather heavy. So one person trying to take it is just going to cause problems. <coughs> so I've got on the floor here since concrete floor, I have a pad for me to put my knees on, a gardening pad. And I've got a uh, home base which is a pizza box with a very large flat tip screwdriver and a pair of pliers and a bag to put the screws and nuts in and but you know just to give it a first look this is you know the chassis is not in bad shape it's actually not very rusted at all which is good now there's a bit more rust on the 
power supply and the speaker here. It has a thing that fills the speaker. That's why it's got this plug. Um, this one managed to get knocked off, which is just goes here and it's the supply. But I could put that back on. I'm going to redo the whole power supply anyway. But the person who had it said that they had it running and it was making static. They also said nothing smoked, so they figured everything was good, but I showed them here that there's a reason why you don't plug these things in. You see all this crumbling insulation? This is the AC line, because it's switched, and that's where it goes to in the power supply. So that would have had unfused 120 volt. What I need to do is I need to crawl under here, remove some bolts so I can get the speaker up and take the power pack out, cut these two wires so, because they don't seem to be easily removable and then just pull the chassis out. And then once I get all that in the house, then the cabinet's gonna go inside. I got some Howards that I'm gonna try on it first. And just to show you, I will flip it around. Yeah, it's pretty nice condition, uh, all things considered. It, uh, there seems to be a small crack here. I don't know if that's, it looks like it's separation, but the dial's in good shape. Both knobs are here. It looks like something is missing, and I don't know, I do have some veneer separation. I'm going to have to glue that now. But uh, there's some veneer separation I'll have to take care of before I do some Howards. I'll do the Howards on the top first, after it sits downstairs and warms up, because it's about 23 degrees out here right now. So I thought you'd like this first look. Oh, and the legs are complete with the stretcher. It didn't get cut down or anything. And I'll have to remove the nasty uh, metal floor protectors, which are just horrible on floors. So, time to flip it back around and uh, start taking the parts out. All right, if it's a little noisier out here, it's because I opened the garage door so let some more light in, but it makes for better video. Um, I made my first success, and the success is that I got all four bolts on up. Is ready to come out. Looks in good shape. Hole in the surround. It's leather, it's pretty tough, but it's a correct peerless speaker for this. That's part one to get out. And the grill cloth from here it doesn't look like it's having any holes in it, just like it might be a little dirty. So next is the power supply to come out, and then a little cleaning, and a little cleaning on the speaker. Okay, I got the uh, power pack out, and it's a common power pack. It's the same one used for the 34P or the uh, 37. So that's actually pretty good because uh, that's one that a couple people I know have actually worked on, so they can help me with it because although I have the service manual, it uh, does not have part values, which is awesome. Now time to pull out the main chassis. And as I'm moving this table, you're cracking. Flip that around and flip it over so we can get a look at it. Well, it's all ready to go inside. I did a quick sweep out of all the big dirt and I'm gonna clean down the wood with the same, you know, just some ammonia water like I did on the uh, Radiola 60 on the inside. That'll kill any nasties that may be there. I have. You never know where this stuff has been for the last 80 years. It obviously wasn't in a house for the last 80 years, or it looked a little different. 
not quite sure what I'm gonna do about this veneer. It's pretty bad coming up, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that. Anyone's got any suggestions, I'd gladly take them. But uh, next stop is a little Howard's after it's sat and warmed up. And uh, then get on to the electronics, which are all sitting right over there right now. But they're, they'll go downstairs too because I can't leave it out here because of animals and stuff. I've brought the cabinet inside. I have it on its back so that I can start gluing up parts that are loose on the front. This veneer here is loose, this panel. This one is not, the other side is not. It's a little, but it's not coming off. So it's kind of hard to clamp. So what I did instead of clamping, you really can't clamp this size. So what I've done instead is to put a piece of cardboard to keep a flat surface, a linear AC power supply, 12 volt, and a, uh, I think it's a 78 hour wet acid battery. So that ought to be enough weight and I'm gluing it up with the tight bond wood glue that I like to use and I've let it sit and so I'm going to move on to the next part and then after this I'm going to start with the gojo on the top to see where it comes and see what happens. Uh, the top should come up pretty nice and um, it should be all good. Oh yeah, tight bond. If you've ever never used it before, this is it here. It's great wood glue. Works so much better than Elmer's. And you can't really see that, but yeah, maybe you can. Out of Columbus, Ohio, made in the USA. Good. And it works really, really good. I used it to glue up an entire cabinet on the uh, Philco TV I'm working on. So I'm going to work on this and uh, go to the next step and the cool thing about the tight bond is it, it sets in 30 minutes um, so you can just let it sit it doesn't have to be clamped for a long time and then it's all good well I applied the gojo treatment and um, discovered a problem I hadn't noticed this one, I went and picked it up, and again it was kind of in a back of a carport, not a lot of light shining on it, but once I got the dirt off, and while I was doing it, I felt something, and what I felt was brush marks. Someone has stripped the top of this and attempted to refinish it. It was so covered in dirt and grime and crap I didn't notice it really but now that I've got a little bit of it cleaned off I notice it more so at the bare minimum this top is going to need to be stripped and have new lacquer put on and if as you can see once I clean this off you can see that it's a really poorly done job I wish people would just leave this stuff alone. All they do is actually cause more work. And this whole antiquing and distressing thing that's made popular by these retarded decorating shows just makes it harder for those of us who actually want to restore these things to do our job. This is the side. This is definitely original. Looks like some lacquer is coming off, but it's not here on the side, and here it's not too bad, and on these cornices and moldings here it's not bad. So I am going to try a little Howard's. Well, we're going to see what we can do, and um, that's about it for today.